what's going on guys it's Tim with Die Paintball and today we're going to be going over a troubleshooting guide on the DSR Plus mech frame. Now the most prevalent issue that we seem to be seeing uh, is a sticky firing pin. Uh, it results in either a shoot down of uh, rate of fire when really getting on the trigger or the marker not necessarily responding uh, or matching the speed of the trigger being pulled. Now, to address, I guess, there are about four things that we would like to look at, look at today. Uh, the easy one is addressing binding for the trigger. Now, depending on how you guys have it set up, you need to make sure that there's adequate pre and post travel uh, and some sort of magnetic break uh, to allow the trigger to return back. Uh, as what we have found is sometimes there's binding here or the break is too weak. Uh, so as people are really getting on the trigger, the trigger is not returning quick enough. Um, so how to address that is you take a look at the four screws at the top. You don't have to take it all the way off. Uh, you're just gonna be loosening up these screws. There should be lateral movement with the trigger assembly. And what we're finding is pulling this straight back and then tightening the screws should provide adequate clearances for the mech trigger. Uh, as there is a, for some people, uh, there's a little bit of scraping um, in the swing of the trigger. So first things first, check that. Second thing, Check what your SFR is set to. Now, now that we're in the colder months at the moment, we're finding that sometimes the marker isn't necessarily happy at the softest or what I would call the most restrictive uh, solenoid flow restrictive setting. Um, if you find that you're having issues at the minus, try switching it to the middle or give it the most flow possible, which is the plus. If your marker continues to have issues, let's pull out the mech frame or the mech trigger assembly. And I'll go briefly onto how this actually functions. So you have air coming from your HPR going through the inlet to the manifold. You have a switch in here which functions very similar to the electro manifold. Or solenoid. Air gets routed through this banjo which is running laterally and then there's a vertical one which is kind of uh, posted inside of that banjo which creates a air passage that links the manifold and the mech assembly in a vertical orientation. Now as this air travels down this passageway it meets up with the back of the firing pin. This also fi fills a air chamber that's located here and is a constant supply. So it creates an air spring against the firing pin, allowing it to reset itself in the forward position. So if you're out shooting the mech frame, it would be because the mech or the firing pin is not returning quick enough. Uh, and that is either due to excess friction with the firing pin or insufficient airflow within the valve. And what we're finding is, or what we found was, our vendor in Taiwan was not using the correct grease. They were using really old stock. Uh, they were not using what we're supplying with everyone's um, markers now. They were using really old stuff that was really thick and we're, we've found that it's been wreaking havoc uh, for the DSR Plus and now the mech frame, which is very, very unfortunate. Um, in particular with the mech frame, the porting and uh, routing within this assembly is very complex and very small. So thick grease clogging up ports and restricting flow is a massive headache and no-no 
for the assembly, which is very unfortunate. So right now we're kind of working on through um, looking at different alternatives. Now this grease should be fine for most of the time, but during our testing, uh, we are recommending a silicone based lube uh, oil, I should say, 100% uh, pure silicone oil. We do not recommend Gold Cup or TriFlow, as that stuff does not mix well with the dye lube. And now, the reason why we're su suggesting 100% oil, or silicone oil, is that if you cannot clean out all of the ports or all of the existing grease, it will gum up with that other type of oil. Um, we have been recommending some people try the silicone oil from PE. Uh, I personally don't like this stuff because it is pretty thin. Now if you mix it with the dye grease, you may find some success there. Uh, I know dye, uh, we, we do plan on providing a oil with a heavier weight. Right now this is just something I'm testing for the moment and I'm finding really great success uh, within this platform and other markers actually. Uh, this is a RC shock oil. <laughs> Uh, 40 weight, 100% pure silicone. Uh, it was, I bought it off Amazon. I think it was like 10 bucks. Uh, it's been really great, and I'll show you guys how to how to apply it. Um, again, we're finding pretty good success with it, so we're hoping that this may help some people out. Uh, I ha I am talking to a few people, uh, a few customers who have purchased it also, and I'm awaiting to see if it has resolved their problems. So. Let's get into how to clean out your mech assembly. So where you're going to want to start is removing these four screws with a very small Allen, or sorry, a very small Phillips. So you're going to remove these four screws and this will allow you to remove the blue manifold here. You're gonna, you're gonna lift this up, and then you're gonna see that vertical banjo that I was referring to. If you guys wanna check out the switch in here, you may. It's gonna look relatively familiar with what we see in the mech, or sorry, in the electro. There it is. There you have your switch for the manifold. This is that lateral banjo that I was talking about, which connects the mech uh, assembly with the manifold in this lateral position or orientation. So as you can see, there's some porting in here. Just make sure that it's nice and clean. It looks good. Uh, the air that travels through the inlet here goes through this port here. So just make sure that these ports are nice and clear as well. Push, move that to the side. This is your vertical banjo. As you can see, there are a lot of little ports onto this thing. Uh, grease on the outside of the O-rings, perfectly fine. Just make sure the internal ports uh, and paths are nice and clear, as this is what's going to be feeding that air chamber for the firing pin. And obviously we want that to uh, replenish quickly for the next shot. We're going to remove the plate the front of for the front of the mech assembly here. Be careful and be mindful of a spring here for the pilot timing switch. As you can see, the gasket decided to stick to the assembly. Just return that to the plate, the front plate, or that's my preference. And then just be mindful of that spring. I like to stick it in the plate and move it to the side. So we have the firing pin here which is probably the meat, the most crucial part of this whole assembly. Um, excess friction here is probably the number one culprit here. 
Um, now, I'm going to remove the first part of the can there. Uh, this is just a cap for the machining of this air chamber down here. Um, there's a port where the vertical banjo was. Make sure that is nice and clear. Uh, I recommend taking off this cap, which is just a simple Allen. We're gonna pull out the assembly of the firing pin cans. And if you can, with compressed air, blow through the, these ports. Um, but do so after we also remove the timing spool, which is here. I have a very small needle here from like a sewing kit and I bent the tip of it into a small hook. And this is the perfect tool for disassembling the mech switch. So there's a small hole um, at the timing spool here. And that's, this will allow us to pull this out just like that, nice and easy. And then you're, there are gonna be two cans for the firing pin inside of uh, inside of this inside of this little guide here um, and there are gonna be two cans inside of the firing pin guide uh, so with this little needle just carefully pull out the assemblies like so and then there's one last 003 o-ring in the very back and again just carefully fish it out like so we're gonna grab a uh, q-tip here make sure it's nice and clean clean out the timing spool opening when flashing light shining light through these ports, you should see light coming through. Um, it's gonna be a little hard to see on camera, uh, but all these are kind of connected in some way. So just make sure they're nice and clean. Um, you can remove this screw too. Uh, you will want this to be not leaking and uh, so not loose really. Um, there's an O-ring that kind of sits underneath of the screw. Uh, if that's displaced and squeezing out, you probably have it too tight. It's just not. It's just not supposed to let air out. That's all. Uh, so remove that screw. There's no other seals left within this block here, this manifold. So go crazy shooting compressed air in it. Uh, nothing's going to be flying out, and all the ports should be clear and free at that point. So let's uh, kind of work on dis or reassembling it and uh, kind of showing what I would recommend for appropriate amount of lube um, in certain applications or types in certain areas. Um, in all honesty, this should be fine for most applications. Um, it, it does seem like this is a massive issue for a lot of mech frames, uh, but fortunately this is still the minority that people are having these um, firing pin issues. So. For the people that are referencing this video, um, I'm going to be advising using something similar to this. Uh, if you continue to have issues with it, or just use very thin layers of uh, the dye slick lube. So we can go ahead and start reinstalling all the pieces. So this is the uh, timing spool. Just for good measure, since I'm going through it, I'm just gonna clean all the parts off, make sure there's nothing excess uh, or old on it. Why not, all right? Everything should be nice and clean now. We're gonna do a nice thin layer for the timing spool here. We're not finding a lot of issues uh, relating to this. Um, it's 
really the firing pin again. But there are ports that can be clogged up in here, so just be mindful when, when applying it. Nice thin layer, as you can see. I'll slip that back in. You're gonna want that tri-faced, tri-faced face <laughs> um, on the outside. Like so. Then we're gonna take that number three. We're gonna drop that back in the firing pin. There's gonna be a little pocket that you see back there. Just make sure that it's laying flat in the back. Sorry if you can hear my dog chewing on a bone right now. Just make sure that 003 is sitting in the back there. Take a very small amount of lube here. It's really just residual on your fingers at this point. Just a very small amount. Can goes in first like this. This end first. Kind of residual again. I will show you guys how to how to apply this silicone oil still. Just give me a moment. Push that through. And then you have the final piece here. Just like that. Now Here's our firing pin. There's a very light coating of grease on it right now. You can take a very small amount of the oil and apply it directly like so. And just reinsert it. And it should be a nice and smooth action. Now that that's reassembled, we can reinstall the cap. Oops. Don't have to crank it down like anything crazy, just snug. All right, so take a little bit of the grease here. This is the switch for the blue manifold here. I personally don't use a lot of lube when I'm uh, maintenancing these switches, so there's no ports running through uh, this piece or internal ports running through the switch, so. You can kind of go a little crazy if you really want. Um, so let's reinstall this switch. Be mindful of the gaskets. Make sure that they're installed in the right orientation. Kind of make sure that's pushed in all the way. Now you got that banjo fitting. Be mindful of the cutout, circular cutout at the bottom here. Um, the vertical banjo kind of fits within that pocket, like so. So when you reinstall this, now these are uh, static seals, so you don't have to like go too crazy with these. The end with the hex on the, on the inside, sorry. Gets installed like so. Got it upside down, flip that around. You want that cut out to be facing the bottom. Now you can take a screw or whatnot and make sure that that opening aligns with the opening here as this banjo will sit in it like so. So we can go ahead and reinstall our front plate 
find the best method is to hold the front plate like so and sandwich the mech assembly on top. You're going to take your small Phillips head Install it, tightening down the plate, remembering that the spring is there, make sure the gasket's all lined up or in there its appropriate pocket. You're gonna take your manifold, rejoin them, and then reinstall the four long Phillips head screws. Now, if you have PE oil, now's the time to get it. I would put a drop or two through the inlet of the manifold. If you have the silicone oil, Again, just a drop or two. Just like that. Kind of let it settle in the switch. So what we're gonna do is remount it into the frame and fire a dozen shots or so through it with air and let it work its way through, um, through the, the whole system here. All right, now we got aired. Gas it up, there should be no leaks. Kind of check it. Should be a nice smooth pull. Kind of give it a dozen shots or so. Make sure it's able to keep up with it. As you can see, everything is actuating as it should. All right guys, so if what we just covered, uh, cleaning out the mech frame, replacing the 003s at the firing pin, and maybe using this new silicone oil uh, does not resolve your issue, let's take a look at the HPR. Uh, let's replace all the seals, the reg seat, and it wouldn't hurt to consider trying a new tank also. Now, if there's inadequate flow or pressure coming out of any of these units, then it's not gonna be able to feed the mechanical uh, assembly or just the marker in general adequately enough. Um, so I hope this video is helpful, helpful for you guys. Uh, if you guys continue to have issues, please contact us at Ditech Central. We'll be happy to help you there. If we can't help you there, We'll have you guys reach out to die directly. Um, they'll have you guys RMA the marker to them uh, and get the marker in hand, replace parts if necessary, uh, and get you guys back up and running as soon as possible. Uh, the turnaround times are pretty good right now. Uh, that may not count with the holidays right now with Christmas coming up um, and New Year's, but uh, we're trying our best uh, to keep you guys up and running um, I know this is very aggravating for some people, but uh, we appreciate you guys sticking with us as uh, your support means everything to us. And thanks for watching, guys. And I'll see you guys in the next video.